EastEnders fans and welcome to another episode of Albert Square After Dark, your weekly EastEnders podcast. This week discussing the episodes broadcast between the 24th and the 27th of July 2023. I hope you are well, viewers and listeners. Let's trust that you are. Uh, joining me as usual is the lovely Re. Hello Re. how are you this week? Oh, good. Thanks, Rob. How are you? Very, very well. Me and Rhea are both sporting green, which if you are only listening, you don't get the joy of seeing. Remember, you can always tune into us on YouTube where you get to see our lovely faces. And why wouldn't you want to do that? You know, because frankly, we're both gorgeous. Both fit right, as a butcher's dog. Up, so. A rate so. fine. So. A, <laughs> we are both a rate fine bit of crackling. Wow. <laughs> Um, update, Ree, please, because this time last week we were discussing that your sister-in-law was in labour and yes. what, is the, what has happened? What is the result? They confirmed that she's no longer in labour. It was a very <laughs> long labour. Took long enough. Took long yeah. enough. Uh, that ended in a C-section. Um, oh, did it? 30 hours, yeah, yeah. Um, and I have a nephew. Yay! Yay! Called Ezra, and he is beautiful. I have seen pictures of him, and he's beautiful. And do give yes. your brother my congratulations. I like your brother. I shall. Me, yeah. and your, me, me and your brother got him very well. He, uh, he did, we, actually, yeah. yeah we, we went to a casino. and, and he Well, was like, that were he was, a night, weren't it? It was a night. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it Why was. Why did we even end up at the casino? Because, I'll tell you what happened, because we went to Manchester for what we thought was a normal pub quiz, and it wasn't oh, a normal pub yeah. quiz. It, what was it? It was themed around one particular topic. It was League of Gentlemen. That was it, that none you of us knew sure. anything about, because none of us ever well, we've, us watched we've it. we've seen it, but not enough to... Not to the like, point where we could uh, like have a specialist yeah. pub quiz about it, so we were like, oh, screw this. Then when we went to the casino, we was in there till 4am getting drunk, and I had a yeah. Chicago Town pizza in the casino, if you remember. Yes, me and you, we both got a cup of tea and a Chicago Town yeah. pizza. <laughs> At three o'clock in the morning. Come on a night out with me and Robin. Oh, it's mental. You wake, you wake up in a skip. <laughs> <laughs> mental oh, oh we've 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 changed as uni haven't we yeah. honestly that, we, that wasn't that long ago to be fair wasn't that long ago there we are uh so on to this week's eastenders i mean it was a week wasn't it i'd say not the strongest week that we've ever ever had um no. I, think we're, I think we're officially in sort of the summer lull type of type of thing it's yeah it was there was a lot of stories this week but also like only kind of really one that stuck out as like the one that was really sort of pushing things forward. Uh, but we shall discuss all the stories this week in this week's Albert Square After Dark. Right, let's start this week uh, with Kim and Howie. We'll go through the stories and see if they did feel quite as higgledy piggledy as they felt like when we were when we were watching them. So Kim is still struggling with her anxiety, uh, and she hasn't done it. Transpires she hasn't done a Kimfluencer video in a while and i have to say re i was kind of pleased about that because the kimfluencer thing was starting to get on my nerves <laughs> i have to be honest i was never a fan i was never a fan of it really it was sort of just i mean i get it and you sort of look at kim and you think yeah i can imagine kim doing that sort of thing but mm. it was just because it just, it just went on for so long and it was like like there have been storylines like serious storylines that have gone on for less time than kim being the social media influencer and the whole fox catcher thing was getting on my nerves as well <laughs> Like, but the fox catcher annoys me more than the kimfluencing. The thing that annoys me most about the kimfluencing is the name kimfluencer because, like, an influencer would not call themselves something like that. But I actually like it, I think it suits the character. But also, yeah. it was starting to become her entire personality, so I know what you mean. Yeah, uh, and it was, it's, it's interesting yeah. that, like, this is this is kind of triggered as a stop doing it uh unfortunately howie goes no you should keep doing that that, that's the thing that you should definitely keep doing i was like for god's sake howie um so he basically persuades her well he basically persuades her to do a video and kim's like kind of really nervous like i'll say hello and that's all i'm doing and then but as soon as the camera goes on her she realizes that she loves doing all this and she turns back into the influencer and everything is all tickety boo and she feels like she's getting her confidence back again or rather Mm -hmm. she enjoys the personality that she is showing on camera and she feels like she can cover like her anxieties and her worries up enough but a with mask up. A yeah it's the mask, mask is yeah, yeah she can cover the cracks with the influencer personality yeah. so she immediately kind of brings the therapist go i don't need you cheers i've sorted myself out looks like ptsd all you need to do is be an influencer all is well um <clears throat> how he kind of goes uh no so fortunately he gets to ring the, the therapist up and he still has the appointment now 
this whole that we have spoken a little bit about the fact that we were kind of disappointed that it had sort yeah. of been solved quite I've mean, I been mean solved but as in terms of getting her therapy and getting her help had kind of been solved quite easily by just her going private and it's and we were kind of wondering whether it was going to be a case of this money that Denise had given them was going to be enough to just pay for her therapy as a whole or just the one session it seems like it's just going to be like therapy as a whole like this is Tim now Kim now in therapy mm. so I mean, there were some interesting scenes with the therapy stuff. I w- and what we said was that we were kind of hoping that they would show Kim in therapy and sort of see her working through her issues. And we did kind of get that this week, which was nice. Um, yeah. But there has been, throughout this, quite a lot of discussion about what anxiety feels like, how she feels, you know, and, and what's actually going through her head at the time. And we got that quite a lot with the therapist session and sort of explaining how worried she is about Pearl and Mika and like how she constantly worries, like she'll create some insane situation in her head where you know Pearl's going to see her mate but in her head like anything could happen she could break a leg she could fall over she could get into trouble and the therapist gives her some CBT techniques which I've had done to me and they do work they do work so they were trying to work through all these intrusive thoughts and I think it were yeah. helpful for Howie to be in there when Kim asked him to come in yeah yeah so he could actually understand what these thoughts are because she's never really vocalized them before has she we've seen We've seen like the end result of her thoughts, so, like mm. when Mika went missing that time and she ran yeah. out and she was reacting. We're like, why are you reacting like that? I don't understand. Now we can mm. kind of understand what's going through her head. I mm. hope that they're going to carry it on though, and we're going to see. I don't know. It does feel a little bit like she's been cured already. I don't know. If I don't that's know. Just her I... With the mask and you know. I don't think that it's showing that she's been cured already. Actually, because okay. I think. Because the thing is with this, and I kind of related to Kim quite a lot throughout this, because I used to suffer personal story time, ladies and gentlemen. Go for I, it, Rob. I used I used to suffer really, really, really badly with hypochondria. Um, no, to the point where you know, and I was really terrible, even at the age of like you know twenty seven. <laughs> like the likelihood of me having a heart attack or a stroke or something like that mm-hmm. at the age of twenty seven was ridiculously low. All right, I know it could happen to anybody at any time, but I was convinced that it was happening to me because, like I've said before, anxiety symptoms, because they're a dick, uh, they ha- they kind of share physical symptoms with things like heart attacks. You know, your chest feels yeah, tight. And, you, and yeah, yeah, and, you know, you start to feel numb on your extremities, which, you know, so similar symptoms. And I've, like, gone into hospital, like, taken myself to hospital mm. and, you know, said I'm having a heart attack. You know, so I was at that level. Mm. And I've had uh, CBT kind of sessions where you kind of you have to basically like talk yourself down from them and go right what is the likelihood of you going of this actually happening to you you Mm -hmm. know you're at the end of the day a a fit health fit yeah yeah, you're at the day a reasonably healthy 27 year old guy who is not going to be experiencing these medical issues Mm -hmm. so it sort of kind of falls well into the category of what Kim was going through where she has to basically sort of lay out the problem in front of her and work out where she is over dramatizing the situation and mm-hmm. how likely each sort of facet is, is to happen. Is and... It does help. It, do, it does really help. So fair play to them for highlighting all of that kind of thing and actually giving some helpful tips and advice for this. Yeah, thing. actually, yeah. It, were good. It, were, it was good watching the therapist say, now let's talk through this intrusive thought. Mm. You know, what would you give rate out of 10, 10 out of 10? By the time she's talked it through and they said, but what's the chance of this happening? Has this ever happened before? Mm. Now rate that thought and she were down to, what, five or six out yeah. of 10? yeah. So hopefully, yeah, this CBT might work for a but Why did they mention the, um, what's it called, the MDR, the eye movement therapy? I'm wondering why they brought that up. Do you think Just another method. I think it's just a method, isn't it? It's just different okay. ways. And I think different therapists have different approaches. <laughs> the the mm-hmm. therapist that Kim went to see was it seemed quite almost hippie-ish didn't it because he had like sort of the bells and <laughs> like yeah which i didn't and... actually really like that they made him kind of this stereotype, quite ste- stereotype. yeah i know what you mean because yeah, they're yeah, not yeah. like that are they no like, I, mine yeah. wasn't like that yeah. mine, unfortunately i've had cbt I... before too actually. yeah yeah um, yeah, yeah. i was part yeah. of a university study though but yeah oh yes yeah you were you were part of several university studies you didn't know about all of them though. uh <laughs> uh and yeah yeah i know what you mean i know what you mean because mine wasn't like that and with more the pity because i feel like i would have been like kim and immediately started playing with the bells and playing with and i'm sure that some people are i'm sure some therapists are like that but it does kind of give that it were a bit too stereotypical i thought this therapist gave the impression that he was someone who went and meditated under waterfalls and all that kind of thing didn't he yeah. yeah yeah um but kim seems to take things from the session and turn the text them forward into her everyday life because she then 
goes and sorts out this argument that Denzel and Amy have been having because we didn't mention this when it happened, but Denzel had liked a photo of a model online and Amy kind of went mad about this. And we weren't really, and it wasn't, it, it kind of was just going on in the background. It wasn't like directly sort of spoken about or directly shown as part yeah. of a storyline, really. It was just sort of, oh, these two are having problems and you sort of just think, all right, teenagers, of course they're having problems, you know. It's, it's not... um, but kind of Kim sits them down and gets them to sort of talk through the issues. And actually what comes out is the fact that the reason that Amy was so angry about it is because she doesn't feel because of her self-harming scars that she will ever look like any of these people that Denzel is liking the photos of, which again, I thought was quite a good sort of thing to cover. That was interesting. And I mm. wonder if this is actually going to kind of continue. I know it seems that they're sort of started because they had some re- weird analogy scene about biscuits, which didn't quite follow. Uh, yeah. But like describing Amy as a pink wafer, like delicate and I fragile. the analogy, but it was an unusual... It's a bit on the nose. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. I, and mind you, they are right. You cannot stick a pink wafer in tea. That's just not a thing. You cannot do that. Pink wafers shortbread. are crap as well. I don't like pink wafers. Like, I don't like pink wafers. No, I don't. They could have no. they could have used better biscuits, and I would have been there for that analogy. I, I mean, yeah, but name another fragile biscuit that you can't stick in tea that's that's sort of works in the same oh, way. Don't get me started. You can't. Let me have a think. No, I no. can't. <laughs> yeah, basically well no uh, it kind of works though because amy feels crap and pink wafers are crap let's just go for that and that okay, that's, yeah, that right. works that works and they're delicate well, and fragile. Quite likes a pink wafer. he does quite like a pink wafer um but i wonder if this is kind of going to come kind of continue i like the fact that this sort of these struggles of amy kind of keep coming forward and sort of they're not like you know foot front and foremost all the time but they do sort of kind of continue in the background that are very mm. much part of her character which is the way to do this sort of storyline in all honesty it yeah. becomes a facet of their character just like how kim is sometimes quite sort of out there and extrovert sometimes amy has confidence issues where she feels like mm-hmm. you know she's not as good as everybody else it's a nice sort of character kind of journey for, for her so fair play on that well, I know that the Amy's <clears throat> argument, so to speak, was, you know, oh, I don't like you liking these pictures because they've not got scars on their arms. Yeah. Yeah, you think that she's kind of within her rights to say, I just don't want you to be liking everyone's picture online also, as well, yeah, rather I mean, than having that as a reason. Yeah, I mean, that sort of forces the category of, like, what are your views on, you know, your yeah. boyfriend liking pictures yeah. of models online? Like, like it's so... I, w- I wouldn't be happy and I'm would in you the not? No, I would not. <laughs> but... You know, if that's they kind of exist, don't they? And yet you're going to try and stop a teenage boy from looking at pictures online. I, I bet he's looking at much worse when she's not around. Yeah, but look at him. You don't have to click the like button, Denzel. No, you don't. That's true. Do you? That's true. That's very true. I never look. Not that I ever look at those sorts of pictures online, but of I course don't. Not, Rob. If I did, I wouldn't press the like button on things like that. No. Exactly. That's what alts are for. Not that I've got one of them either. Trust, trust me, mate. Alt, an alternative <clears throat> social media account. This is what you like. Some people have got. God, this is like trying to explain it to my grandma, right? So sometimes <laughs> on Twitter and things like yes. that, right? You can have an alternative Twitter account, which is still you, but you're you. But that's your account for sort of looking at that sort of thing, and maybe you might post pictures of yourself, and it's sort of an account designed to explore all that sort of your personality. <laughs> I know. I didn't know about. Are you joking? No, it's a oh, thing. I've never heard that. Oh, have you not? No, it's a thing. It's very much a thing. Trust you to know about it, Rob. I hear these things, you know. I'm a man of the world, Ray. I and I I don't take part no in it, idea. but I am, I understand that. Well, this you know, I learn I learn so much from Rob. You have no mm. idea the the time she leads a, I learn from Rob. She leads a very secluded lifestyle. What can I say? <laughs> what can I say? Um. So yeah, do you think this is more to come with Amy and Denzel? I mean, I still uh, it's still a good week for Denzel. I thought in terms of his character, he's still coming mm. across as quite a sweet sort of sensitive guy, but he's at the same time a bloke. You know, that's about all it was with him, really, wasn't it? A young lad, I mean, he was showing off to Nugget as well when he yeah, did he initially that. like it and stuff. Yeah, I don't know, is there anything going to come of it? Why else? Why put it in? Or was it just a plot device to show that, you know, kids I think, going yeah, back I, to trying to help other people with their problems kind of I thing? I think that's or... what it was. Because also what we should point out also is that she also, Kim also starts talking about her mental health in her videos as well. And that seems to kind yes. of get a fairly good reaction. Apparently, like, you know, a couple of people leave the video, but all then all, other people are actually really listening to mm. her and saying, how brave she is and you know all that kind of thing so it's interesting that she can maybe use her social media powers for good and that's and that's going to help it, people I've as well i've seen an influencer online who has followed this kind of pattern so i'm wondering if they're taking bits from her maybe online persona if you like and using it with kim yeah just like I, you said that then 
I, you know, considering what I said at the start of this about, you know, the Kim Commons thing was getting on my nerves a bit. I like this side of things. I like the fact that she can then, you know, use that to actually help people and help herself at the same time. Because when she's talking about it, you know, there's nothing better for your mental health sometimes than just talking about it. You know, mm. talking, saying I'm not OK, it's OK not to be OK, you know, all that kind of thing. Mm. It does really help. So it's a two way process and everyone and everyone wins in that kind of scenario. So, yeah, it's good. I'd like I'm I'm intrigued to sort of see where this goes from here actually because like sort of showing the journey and she shouldn't sort of consider herself cured from this point and the show and the story shouldn't consider herself cured from this point it should be a bit like Amy sort of sometimes you, you yeah, take a few steps I was back thinking that when you said it yeah 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 so like sometimes take a few steps back and then sometimes you go forward again so hopefully this is still you know regardless of the fact that they might have cut a few corners in terms of how they got to this point hopefully it will still be you know, the same sort of journey where we're really kind of showing Kim's recovery process, essentially. So, Kathy has discovered exactly what went on with her honeymoon. Um, this was a nice little, this a nice little thing at the start, but it sort of it, it was only lasted like the first couple of episodes of the week, and then sort of petered out again. But I was quite enjoying this because. Um, it didn't occur to me that Kathy wouldn't have known exactly what happened with the poker match. I think she just kind of thought that Rocky had met some randomers or something and had then just kind of given her honeymoon away. What she didn't realise was that Suki, who had turned up at her kind of pre-wedding little drinky thing, was actually the one that was going on her honeymoon and she was not thrilled about it. I, I did enjoy her, you know, Suki was kind of sat there trying to do her work, Vinny was trying to teach her Greek and Kathy's just standing there behind the counter giving her daggers like, bitch, I'm kill you. Yeah, insane. Oh, she's just trying to rub it in and it's like, Suki, <laughs> Suki's really not trying to. No, Suki she could really not care less. Greek. Suki couldn't care less. Yeah. Um, but interestingly, Nish had basically told Suki that, yeah, no, I bought this holiday for you. This is for us. I've, I've bought this out of our well-earned money and we're going to sort out our relationship and it's going to be great for us. And all a lie, all a lie, which I think hit Suki. Did it hit Suki hard? I don't know, because obviously Suki couldn't care less about Nish in the grand scheme of things. So. Yeah. I don't know whether she was kind of just kind of a, been, being made aware that he was once again sort of just not treating not treating their marriage mm. properly and lying to her. And it was just another sort of tick on the chart as to why they're terrible together. Um, I think that is what it is. I don't think she was that bothered. No, I mean, Vinny was delighted by the idea of them going away together. And it, cause Why Vinny would is you just... get that giddy about I know, I parents mean, Vin... going on holiday? Because Vinny is absolutely convinced that like all they need to kind of remove these phase-type feelings of Suki being a lesbian and being with Eve and being in love with a woman is for them to go oh, and have a cruise yeah. together. Yeah, all of that, what remember? I forgot he knew yeah. all that. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, Vinny knows about all that. They haven't spoken about, right. about the Suki and Eve thing since then. But yeah, Vinny does know, remember. Um, yes. But Kathy basically gets the impression from Suki when she tells her quite joyfully I just can't wait to tell Suki <laughs> like when Rocky kind of like I, I like the fact that when Suki found out she sort of just like looked quite kind of perturbed and left and Rocky was like oh, oh that was awkward and she got the message Kathy's like yeah too right she got yeah. the message um, but then Kathy goes to the minute mark with two glasses of wine I like I, I love this side of Kathy that she if, if in doubt we'll have a glass of wine we'll sort it out the London way of doing things so they agree and they basically arrange to have another poker game now <laughs> this poker game was in the Vic so George played dealer complete with visor uh, and they basically sort why of why did George play dealer because George was there in the start and I think George just okay. he just asked if he wanted to be a dealer because he was owner of the establishment so he you know just basically illegal but anyway we were talking about this before we before we started the recording, weren't we? About like poker mm. games in sort of establishments. Obviously, you own a bar, and we wouldn't be you wouldn't be allowed to do that in your bar. You were saying, no, it's totally illegal. Anything to do with gambling, you don't have a, you have to have a license, don't you? Mad isn't it? But then we were saying as well, like obviously, regardless of where a poker game is, if you're playing a private poker game between friends. Mm. Do you enter some legal obligation that you have to give them whatever you've gambled in a poker uh, yeah. game? This is the other so thing. Like, tell us that because we tried to look it up and we can't find it's always other than actual poker games. Yeah, surely not. Surely it's I not mean, a thing. It's always sort of that thing in TV shows, especially that like it's base. It you know if you win something in a poker game, it's literally sort of like almost a contractual obligation yeah. that you have to then kind of take it away. And I think it was actually obviously very relevant that it was Nish who won it. So Nish was never going to give that back because as far as Nish is concerned, it's another status thing. So I won that in the poker game. So if you think you're getting that back, then you're off your head. You know, Nish was never going to give that back. So they had to stage this new poker game where Kathy is pretending to learn how to play poker 
Or I don't I don't think she did know how to play poker. Like Suki basically yeah. taught her the the very bare minimum of what she needed to know. And then when Nish was there and Rocky was there, they got to a point quite quickly where Kathy went, "Oh, I haven't, well, I haven't got to run out of money, but haven't you got like tickets to a holiday? I'll have that." And in response, and in reply, you can have Jasper the parrot. And uh, and Rocky's like, uh, "Wait, what? Wait a minute! Wait a minute!" Kathy's like, "No, no, this is it." So. Kathy wins the holiday back by having a pair of fours and Suki has nothing because she was bluffing. <laughs> it's like, I don't know how they did this, really. I, I'm not quite sure because George was the dealer, so it's not like they kind of faked the cards or anything. So I'm not entirely sure, apart from Suki's eyebrow being sort of the I was going to say that maybe Kathy and Suki were like communicating to each other, but then well, again... Quite a risk when she had just four. Uh, yeah, it, yeah, she... very risky. Mm. Yeah, I mean that's not that's not exactly difficult to beat. I know enough about poker to know that two fours is a pretty yeah. crap hand. And I yeah. think really, in a proper game, you'd have two fours. If there was a few of you around there and you had two fours, you would be like, "No, I'm not playing that. I'm not playing that round." You'd fold. You'd fold quite mm. quickly at the start. But so to try and show that Kathy had no idea how she was playing, that she carried yeah. on going with two fours, maybe. Yeah, exactly. Like, and then yeah. Suki was kind of like, "No, I was bluffing. You've won the game. Congratulations." So Nishi is left kind of fuming and furious, and Suki's got one over on Nish. Now, maybe what this is actually meant to do, and, you know, Kathy and Rocky go off on their honeymoon and all is well with them, um, but what maybe is kind of left lingering in the air is sort of the Nish and Suki thing. Is Nish going to, well, how is Nish going to react to this? Is this going to be a thing? Or was it literally just kind of tying a ribbon on that whole thing and Nish got his comeuppance and then we just move on to the next thing? What do you think? Well, Suki, Suki said to him, didn't she? You were never, you were never going to uh, go on that cruise. It was somebody else's honeymoon. You were all, she said, you were always going to give them back the tickets. Mm. Like she was almost gaslighting him into thinking yeah, in yeah, a way, no, yeah, you yeah. Were, yeah you you know you were the one who were going to give him back you would have never done that would you because you know you're such a pillar of the community Nish. yeah you're such you a decent bloke yeah yeah, yeah yeah but oh. then he were like yeah yeah of course and then angrily drank his whiskey didn't he <laughs> yeah yeah is it is but, yeah, i don't but... think anything will come of it i think that will no. be just to show that suki can work nish Oh, yeah. Their advantage in these ways, as we've seen a few times before, but I don't think anything else will come of that. Yeah, it's re- it's interesting with Suki and Nish because obviously, effectively, this is a coercively controlling relationship that they've got going there. But at the same mm. time, Suki is more than capable of sort of standing up for herself and dealing with it. She's got that fire, which I think is what Nish attracted uh, Nish to her in the first place. You know, mm. she, Suki can take down anybody she likes if, you know, if, if the cards are in the right place. Um, so it's Wait. sort of interesting that, uh, hey, card gag. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but it's interesting that sort of that fire that Nish is attracted to and sometimes mm-hmm. uses to his advantage as well. Like he will use Suki to sort of sort him, like sort his own deals out and go, you need to go deal with that because you'll be great at dealing with that. Mm-hmm. That fire that he uses can often go against him. So mm-hmm. it means that he's now going to have to kind of up his game, continue having one over on Suki. So I, I, the Nish and Suki thing is such a kind of fascinating thing, and the Paul Panasar story. I kind of want to get back to that. I know, I know, we have like breaks in the stories and all that kind of thing, but I'm really kind of keen to get back to the sort of Suki Eve Nish dynamic mm. and sort of see what happens there because Nish is definitely on the floor Christmas Day. I swear to God, I still think. Yeah, that. It's st- yeah, same. But also, I just thought when you said that, are even Suki still split up? Then they've not gone running yeah, back into but, each other's not, arms. As no, they've not, no, they've not. They've not. They've not. No, because we thought it was going to literally just be a few days and they'd be kind of yeah. irresistibly kind of pulled back to each other magnetically. Mm. But no, they haven't. They don't seem to have spoken since all that happened. So again, right, I'm keen okay. to get back to that and see what and see mm. where that goes next. <laughs> it's exciting. Something well, else. Sorry. Yeah. Rewind as I like to do. Uh, something we didn't mention when in the Kathy and Rocky scene at the cafe, there was a song playing in the background. Oh yes, yes. The Rose song that George Kiss was playing on the Kiss yeah. from a Rose. Now, often EastEnders will play sort of music scenes to sort of accompany what's going on on screen, not necessarily yeah. hinting at anything, but like, you know, if two, uh, you know, two, if a couple is having an argument, I don't know, yeah. Kaiser Cheese every day, I love you less and less to be playing in the background or something yeah. like that, you know, yeah. something along those lines. But it's a, it was an odd choice of song to use at that moment because that song has been become sort of inextricably linked to the Cindy storyline. Yeah, but, definitely. Obviously, Kathy will be involved in the Cindy stuff, but Suki maybe not so much. So, why did they choose to play that scene, that song at that scene? 
Well, maybe Suki will be involved because I think all of this with the cruise was just a way for Kathy and Suki to develop their friendship a little bit yeah. more as well. Yeah. So maybe they are all somehow. Maybe oh, Kathy and Suki, Suki versus all. Cindy. Oh, that I would pay to see. Oh, yes, please. Yeah. Yes. Inter- yeah, because she's friends with Kathy now. So she is. She is. So her, Elaine, and and Kathy taking on Cindy. Ooh. That would be nice. Oh yes, please. Oh. Imagine. Oh, oh, I need a cigarette to get over the thoughts of that. <laughs> oh my goodness me. Yes, please. Um, right, so yeah, very much kind of stick a pin in that and see where that goes next. Uh, another small little story next is Alfie, and he's got himself a new job. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have an official return this week, and it's not a character. The betting shop is officially back in business. I am very pleased to see it. I have to say, it's been a long, long time since we've seen the betting shop as a set and as a place, but it's nice to see it back. Um, and Alfie has managed to get himself a job there. Um, and it's, I mean, I think it's quite, it kind of suits his characters to work in a betting shop. That sort of works. Um, but he has a, a boss that doesn't seem that keen on him, which sort of immediately makes me wonder who interviewed him for the job. Because Olga, as she is, didn't seem to really know who he was. So I want to know who, how he got that job if Olga wasn't the one that interviewed him. Seemed odd. That is true. Maybe it was the owner of the betting shop. But yeah, that's a very valid point. I'd not thought of that. Yeah. I mean, this sort of thing, like, I'm, I'm assuming that... Bet Hart is kind of like a chain, but then you'd still have like the manager of that shop being well, the one that was interviewing. If she's you, the general you? manager, you'd think, yeah. It's odd, yeah. but anyway. Um, so yeah, she he does he and Olga don't seem to get on on the right get off on the right foot because Olga's quite spiky. I quite liked her. I thought she's got a bit of something about. We not had a kind of hey, Polish yeah, character but... in East Dennis for ages, if ever. I can't remember the last time there was someone like Olga in the. On this is show. she Polish? Did you say that? She I think was? it was Polish. I think it was Polish. I think so. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong in the in the in the comments, but I'm yeah, fairly sure so. it was Polish. Yeah. Um, which is good. Which is good though, because like somewhere like London, you're going to have like all sorts of multicultural things going. That on. is we don't, true. Yeah. We don't see we don't see sort of like Polish and all that kind of thing in the show that often. Not if European. at all. So yeah, that's the one I was looking for. <laughs> Thank you. You know that you know that that Europe that continent that yeah, we live yeah, in. Yeah. I couldn't remember what it was called. Mm. There we are. <laughs> um, yeah, um, but, but yeah, but, Olga. Bit age prejudice, isn't she? Like, well, yeah, that's I mean, pretty she... bad. You can't just you can't treat a new employee like that. That's no, pretty bad. no, it wasn't the great with her. It wasn't great with her people skills, was she? In terms of no. like, no, no. Um, but she seems to have kind of been won around quite quickly because Freddie and Patrick. Now, Patrick, you can imagine, never left the betting shop. You know, even yeah. if we haven't seen it on on screen for years and years, Patrick has always been there in the background. Still I think. regular. Yes, uh, and Freddie obviously is kind of quite supportive that his housemate has got himself a new job, and uh, so he and Patrick end up staging this sort of customer argument, like obviously making out that Alfie doesn't know either of them, and like Alfie sorts it out in inverted commas, and Olga's like, oh, maybe you, maybe you will work here. That's not, that's not bad. That's not bad. Well done, Granddad. Oh, yeah. it's very age, very, very age prejudice. I yeah. now I don't know if Olga kind of screams new character necessarily to me. I don't know whether she's going to be around mm. for the foreseeable or or what. What do you think? I'm not sure. She's been given a few fair few lines. Well, she so, had like quite a lot of personality why, to start yeah, off with, didn't so she? Why introduce her at all? But there's a bit of a theme going on at the minute, Rob. Right? And that is gambling. Yes, we've yes. got you know all the uh, Nish and Rocky. Uh, poker game lisa and her gambling addiction now yes. we've been introduced to the book is is mm-hmm. this all linked to christmas day what's going to go on is it gambling be something... there's a lot of gambling there's, there's going a, on. a lot of yeah it seems yeah. to be the theme at the minute Either that or East Dennis is really promoting the, the art of gambling. I'm quite right too gambling's a great thing to remind thing to do you then. yeah go and have a bet you know if in doubt <laughs> Let's have a gamble. You might win something. You know, there's do nothing it in wrong person with gambling. because you'll get more money in person apparently than if you do. It I didn't know that. I didn't no, know that. I didn't. Did you know that? I didn't no. know that. Mind you, I don't know the first thing about betting or anything like that. Me and my mate Michelle, right? We <laughs> we once what well, you know, Michelle. We both uh, decided. I don't know why we decided to do this, but we thought we had a decision one day that we were going to become rich by doing a stupid bet. 
So we went into a betting shop because we know neither of us know anything about betting whatsoever. Uh, we decided to go into a betting shop and make the most stupid bet on like something that had had no odds against it whatsoever. I think it was a greyhound race we ended up betting on. <laughs> it was something stupid like you know 180 to six or some bizarre number like that, and we put like a tenner on it and we're convinced that we we're going to become millionaires. I think we were drunk. I can't quite remember, but that happened. So that yeah. kind of shows how much I understand all of this sort of thing. Like talking about like online betting and all that kind of thing they may as well have been talking in latin for the amount i understood yeah. what was going on during Same. this Same. <laughs> but yeah so basically the long and short of it is alfie now works at the betting shop i think it suits him it's nice to have sort of patrick to have somewhere else to go as well so i'm always up for patrick kind of having a, an extra scene now he doesn't yeah. work at the vic anymore which was a shame i quite like patrick being a sort of barrel man yeah i liked that yeah that's also- a shame what about the little scene in the uh, Minute Mark with Elaine and um, Linda and Alfie? Elaine yeah. was throwing some light shade at him, weren't she? I, yeah, see, if yeah. I was Alfie, I was forget yeah, bear in mind like the relationship that Alfie and Elaine have had so far. Yeah. Like, Elaine kind of arrived and immediately got Linda to sack him from the Vic. And then, like, she's sort of making comments about him like that. Yeah. Oh, someone's finally seen, hasn't seen through your all your kind of rigmarole about being like a happy chappy bloke then. It's kind of like, right, Elaine. Happy chappy down on his look or whatever it is. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, I don't like him at all, yeah. does she? No. Um, so Fair I mean, play, neither do I. <laughs> you don't like? Do you not like Alfie? Not no, your favourite. Not really. I I loved Alfie when he first 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 came into EastEnders in the noughties. Absolutely yes. loved him. Really mm. worked. Fantastic. Now I am tired of it. Now I'm bored of it. Isn't yeah, it? I. I wasn't keen on him when he first re- when he first came back because he was doing that whole really ran like kind of almost uncomfortable to watch kind of chasing cat around like forcing her to kiss yeah, him and all that like, kind of thing and and that whole fear level <laughs> yeah and that whole ridiculous thing with like the Christmas panto and all that kind of thing which oh don't even remind me oh, but I, about that, yeah. I feel like he's calmed down a lot recently like now he's not kind of chasing after cat I feel like he's sort of. I don't mind him as much. I can kind of deal with him. And apparently, I don't know what it is, but apparently there is a big story coming for Alfie soon. That's the thing. Oh, we yeah, have seen about I don't know what that, it is. So hopefully yeah. that's going to give us something else. It's leading up to Alfie having a big storyline. Con- yeah. Why are him and Mitch constantly running around playing football at the minute, by the way? I don't know. It's just a lad thing, isn't it? Is it? Is it Rob? Thanks. I, like I know, like I know. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't think it yeah. Is, I'm always going around with a football, doing keepy uppies and all that kind of thing. Do I not look like a fit footballer? What are you trying to say? <laughs> but why are they doing that? I think that's going to play night. relevant somehow. No, I'm, I'm not buying that. That's just a little thing that they're doing. I think that's going to. Well, what else something. could it be? They're going to be betting on football it... things. That's what it's going to be. Really. Or maybe be... Alfie's, or maybe he's going to be having a kick about and he'll have a heart attack or something. I don't know. But I'm telling maybe. you. Mark my words, big okay. door, kick about with football. <laughs> it's the connections. Remember. You, you, you're making your own little chart of clues about how this you is all going to be. Yeah. You oh, did hear I? it here. I actually you. write with all these little things. Do it. <laughs> like Ree's chart of theories is going to be a fascinating bestseller <laughs> right, yeah. one day. Yeah, yeah, why not? All Do right. that. Let us know in the comment section below if you think that where you think Alfie's storyline is going and do you think that him playing football in the square has any connection about where his story might be going. Re certainly does. I'm not convinced, but let us know in the comments below. <laughs> On to Sharon and Keanu now. And oh, do you know, if it wasn't for the fact that the Taylors don't deserve to go through this again, I would not object to Keanu being on the floor on Christmas Day. I really, really wouldn't. He was doing my nutting this week. Was it you? Yeah, well, I've just read my notes from this week and I don't even know what it were, you know, in relation to, but I've wrote F. Keanu for some reason. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. agreed yeah. 100%. Yeah. Uh, oh, so, my God. I mean, I, I, the fact that he's got the, he's got the nerves to break up with Sharon. I'm, 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 just, 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 do you know what? We're going to get into this as you know, 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 on the storyline right, because, right. That, yes, yes, okay, we have a lot to say. Yeah. After. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So... He is desperately trying to contact Lisa, who was obviously gone off with Peggy after have the Sharon and Martin sort of, you know, worked a way around her getting the passports back from the high shelf that Keanu had cleverly hidden them on. Mm. Um, and uh, Keanu obviously is kind of really panicking and trying to get done. And Eve's legal friend that he was trying, he was basically been harassing all weekend, uh, confirms that there's nothing that he can do unless Peggy is in the country. So his best bet is to sort of try and get Peggy back in the country, and then he might have some sort of legal leg to stand on. 
he goes and sees Phil. Phil reacts kind of predictably and goes, uh, oh. I mean, I thought Phil was quite harsh to him, to be fair. I, but... <laughs> I absolutely loved that Keanu walked in room and the way that Phil greeted him were, get out. <laughs> Still, it's kind of go-to greeting, really, isn't it? It doesn't. He's, yeah, he's never been one to sort of ch- cheery conversation. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, but Phil kind of just basically said, "Yeah, you're a loser, and you're never getting your daughter back. So get over it and get out of my office," which didn't go well for him, really. But why? Why would I don't understand why? I know why Keanu went to him, but I don't understand yeah. why you'd think that Phil would help you. Why would why he would, why would he help you away from Louise? Yeah, I mean, he was He'd basically say, yeah, think, but not yeah. Louise. I think that was it. I think he was basically trying to work on the notion that Phil is that against Lisa being anything involved mm. in Peggy's life that he might try and help him because of that. He greatly overestimated how much phil cares about him as a person yeah definitely. <laughs> like, yeah so that didn't go well so then his only go-to is karen and i have to say karen was doing my nut in this week as well like it's just so she's i mean obviously there's no love lost between karen and sharon but i am sort of dying for sharon to give karen a smack in the mouth at some point <laughs> because if you remember i think it was i think it was sharon that cared. like when karen first arrived um she she smacked uh, Sharon one. I think it was Sharon that she smacked when she first arrived. You know, to sort of cement that idea of what sort of family they were and what sort of person Karen mm-hmm. was, like sort of like this gobby chav. So her, her and Sharon kind of got into arguments straight away and Karen ended up smacking her one. So I wouldn't mind that being returned at some point because I think yeah. Karen is being really, really sort of like overly aggressive, really overprotective of Keanu. In fact, I, worse than Keanu yeah. is. Go on. And I, I just don't understand why they think they've got a leg to stand on with it. I haven't. don't understand they haven't. why they think that they've got a right to... It's the immaturity it's... of Keanu that is really yeah, kind of showing not, through here. It's nothing to do with which gender parents, which in this scenario whatsoever. No. Like, you know, whether she should be with a mum or a dad. It's that she is with the parent and that is her life. That is yeah. what she's used to. She has a routine. Yeah. So for me, if you're that bothered, Keanu, go and move to Portugal and try and be involved there. That would yeah. be the solution. Not you taking Peggy away from her actual life and bringing her to the square that she doesn't know. She's been here yeah. for a week. And my God, did she have a dramatic week while she were here and all the stuff she were over here in, right? Yeah. Maybe she don't want to live maybe she don't want to live on Albert Square. Uh, why I've would you as that. a kid? Why would you as a kid? Because guaranteed, if you live if you live on Albert Square as a kid, you are going to have some sort of traumatic event happen to you that will then affect you for the rest of your entire well, I think life. She already has to be honest. You're only there for a week and there were a lot of shouting and arguing going on. Yeah. And I remember Kat coming down and saying, oh, she might be able to hear uh, you. Do you want to keep it down? Yeah. I mean, this is the thing, isn't it? Like, Keanu is at no point really thinking about Peggy when he's kicking off about all of this. It's all about him and his role in Peggy's life because he wants to be part of his daughter's life. He's not thinking for a second that upending Peggy and kind of taking away from the life that she in her few years on this earth has kind of no, gone to, like grown to know and sort mm-hmm. of you know she's got a little mate and she's got her school and like she's got a sort of set up with with Louise and everything like at no point is he kind of thinking all right well it, it would be disturbing for her for me to kind of just pluck her out of that and get her to live in London like he's not thinking of that at all he's just purely yeah. thinking of himself and yeah. why Sharon is so bang out of order for kind of interfering and trying to kind of make Peggy's life easier in that respect. Mm-hmm. And so he has the nerve, the audacity and temerity to dump Sharon because of her involvement in it. And he also chucks Martin out of the house. Like, what right has he got to do that? Honestly, what right has he got to dump Sharon? I don't Excuse right. Excuse me? You've never had it You're so good, Sunshine. You're dumping the Queen? You have Give never had me. it. Never had it so good, Sunshine. <laughs> He was trying to rob her money not that long ago and she forgave him like that. And exactly. And now he's trying to dump her. Who do you think Rid- you are, Keanu? I'm going to call you Keanu now. Just Keanu. 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 No. No. Honestly. Um, because he discovers uh, a voicemail that Lisa left on Sharon's phone. Because Lisa really helpfully yeah. rings Sharon up and goes, oh, cheers for that, by the way. Cheers for helping you and Martin for sorting out that passport thing. You've really, really helped me. No way is Keanu going to get like contact with Peggy now. <laughs> so Keanu sees this message on her phone and then goes into the vic and plays it in front of everybody in sort of traditional EastEnders like, kind of reveal fashion. Um, and then sort of just breaks up with it because as far as he's concerned, Sharon has completely and utterly betrayed his trust and there is no future for them. It's I mean, the, the cheek... I mean, yeah, she's lied to him, right? Yeah. She's not going about Welcome it. to your relationship. I mean, her intentions were a lot better than his intentions yeah. when he was trying to get Reese to, you know, sort of uh, yeah, right? out so that he could rob money from her. 
Yeah. And he's got the cheek to be like this with her about it. Yeah, it's your daughter, but come on, mate. You didn't care about her this time two weeks ago, so what are you trying uh, for? It's ridiculous. Nah. Um, yeah, so he breaks up with Sharon, and then meanwhile, obviously, because basically Sharon, and Sharon is completely not reasonable about it all. She's like, no, well, yeah, obviously you can still see Albie and all that kind of thing, because obviously this is sort of the catalyst to where this is all coming from, sort of access to children. So, yeah. yeah, of course you can see Albie. And I think there's maybe a little bit in her mind that thinks that, you know, Keanu is basically just throwing a tantrum at this point and that it all will be well. But it seems at the moment as though their relationship is off, the wedding is off. Which kind of, again, makes you question how the hell does Sharon end up in a wedding dress on Christmas Day? So, you know, it kind of makes me think that... Because, you know, Keanu is also making noises by the end of the week. Oh, yeah, I, all I wanted to do really was kind of... When Sharon was outside arguing with my mum, all I wanted to do was run outside and sort of defend her. So, obviously, you know, he's not completely angry with her. And I think he was sort of just acting reactionary mm. knee-jerk. And they probably will end up getting back together at some point. But you kind of think, like... Why would you? You're you're really badly suited. This week, more than anything, has demonstrated that they are not a good couple and that they only met to have a sexual exciting affair. But as they actually try and make an actual genuine go at a relationship and a marriage, that ain't going to work. And why the hell would Sharon want Karen as a mother-in-law full time? I wouldn't. I couldn't deal with that. Oh, my. Yeah, that is so true. Well... Can't pick them, can you, Rob? You can't pick them. So there we are then. Um, so all of that's going on. Linda has returned from a little trip from going to see Lee and kind of catches wind of what's going on. And she clearly has been missing Sharon and missing their friendship. Now, this whole feud between her and Linda hasn't actually been that much of a thing, has it? Like this epic feud that they're supposed to have had. It's more just been that they just haven't spoken to each other since it happened. I'll, yeah, I was just going to say that. They had one epic feud, didn't they? And then they yeah. just didn't speak to each other, which... For those two, it was quite a big thing, really. Because it was, close, yeah, they were very good, there. yeah. And what I love, I did quite enjoy, like Elaine. <laughs> I was turning around to Linda and go, "Well, what do you expect? You stabbed her in the back." <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, for you." Yeah. <laughs> I love Elaine. Oh, I don't yeah. care what people yeah, say. Yeah, but to be fair, Elaine, when when Linda were doing all that, Elaine were constantly telling her like, "You need to tell Sharon." So yeah, that's yeah. why she said, it. "She's like, remember, I told you, you should have told her." Yeah, stab her in the back. Um, so. Linda, Linda kind of trots across to the garage to try and sort things out for Sharon. Bless her, actually, because, you know, that was a fairly kind thing to do. It doesn't go well. You know, Karen's yeah. there, like, barking away like a little bloody rottweiler. Uh, and it gets it gets back to Sharon that Linda was trying to get involved. So Sharon kind of goes up to her and goes, was it not enough that you stole the pub off me? Was it not enough that you stabbed me in the bag? But now you're trying to get involved in my relationship as well. I can't stand you. So it's having a massive go at her. Um, and Linda's devastated by this uh, and kind of goes back to the pub and sort of relays what's gone on. And Anna gets an idea into her head. Right, well, there's only one way to sort this out. I need to lock them both in the cellar and the barrel store. And that's yeah. what she does. She brings yeah. Sharon up and she goes, right, we need to sort out this pie and punch up night thing that Phil and George have got going on. So Sharon comes over, uh, finds Linda in the store because no one else is around. Like everyone else is, I assume everyone else is just kind of hidden, <laughs> like in a full pub outside. Sharon actually has to come through to the barrel store and find Linda. There's nobody oh, on the bar, yeah, you know. True. They're all hiding upstairs or something, I assume, and sort of waiting for Sharon oh, to come they've... in. Oh, they've said George is in the uh, yeah. cellar room or something. Sure. Or, yeah, I've not even yeah. thought of that, yeah. But um, yeah, so Sharon kind of is in the barrel store and Anna closes the door, locking them both in there. So they have to sort out their issues. And I actually really enjoyed this scene. I would have liked more of this, of more of this scene, actually, because it was nice stuff. Um, yeah. And sort of them just talking about their issues. And eventually they start end up having a laugh together, realising that they've really missed each other's friendship. And by the end of it, all seems to be well with Sharon and Linda again. They've made up and they are arranging to have a night of fruit and nut in front of the telly whilst they discuss all of Sharon's tumultuous love life issues. Nice. Perfect. Nice. I really enjoyed it, yeah. I'm, I'm glad that they've made yeah. up. And I'm, I am I, I liked it that when they were arguing, they were still laughing at each other because yeah. they've got that friendship there. So yeah. even when they've not fully made up, and they kept saying little things, they were laughing at each other because they're friends. And they are friends. And they got on really well. And I'm pleased, actually, that they're friends again. Um, so, but that, again, that puts uh, Linda and Sharon kind of back in each Christmas other's day, peripheral yeah. again for Christmas Day. So that's sorted. Because I was wondering kind of how they were going to sort of end up back in the Vic together, so to speak. So there's so many questions still need to be answered about Christmas Day, which it, it, there should be this far away still from Christmas. But it's just kind of putting all the little pieces into place. So, yeah, I can't wait. I cannot wait till it starts kicking off again. Um, so, yeah, I mean, my question really is, you know, uh, when do, uh, Keanu and Sharon going to get back together again? What do you reckon? Are they going to sort each other out or what's going on? 
I hope not, but yeah, he's probably going to get back with it because he needs to, doesn't he? It's convenient. What, is he going to carry on just having archers and managing it when they've split up? Like, why yeah. is Sharon being, why is Sharon being such a mug for him? Why is she, like, she... pandering towards him? She's been really overly reasonable with it because she'd even turn around to him at some point this way and say, oh, you, well, you can still work at the Archers. I've still got you that, so that's fine. Whereas, realistically, Sharon could kind of just quite easily sort of like go to a, a, I don't know, a small claims court or something and be like, well, mm. no, I own that business. Sharon technically does really own the business. The current yeah, Sharon she could e- she owns could, the Archers. could easily get rid of him if she wanted Yeah, very, very, archers. very yeah. easily. And her and Phil would then basically be running both the boxing ring and the Archers together, which mm-hmm. really... You know, I know that Phil was kind of really annoyed about the fact that Keanu basically now owns the Archers. Um, but really, it's basically now still owned by Sharon and Phil, effectively, isn't it? So that's mm-hmm. not going to be that difficult to sort of get back into place should they not get back together. And Sharon and Phil have kind of all have kind of got all their dominoes lined up to sort of continue with businesses and their relationship if that happens. Sorry, something I've just thought. Yes. Then. Okay. That please correct me if I'm being dumb or okay. this has been covered. But the Panasars had a share in the Archers. Have they still got their share then? At what they, they were going, I think. It. Yeah, I think what happened there was they were going to have a share in it, and then because uh, Nish was trying to get Ben to sell it to him, and I don't think it happened in the end. I don't think I it happened. They already had a share in it. Yeah, and then I think I can't. Me. Yeah, someone. Then they buy it someone... back. Yeah, someone will tell us in the comment section. It was a while ago please. now. I I think yeah, I'm, I'm fairly. It ended up back with Ben at some point, and right, then Ben okay. sold it to Sharon. I can't remember how it ended up back with Ben, but it did eventually end up back with Ben because Nish was right. trying to persuade Ben to sell him it, and then Ben was like, uh, uh, "No, do one. Was it something to do with them finding about finding out about Jags and they didn't want? I can't remember. It was probably something. it was probably around that time. Yeah, because that, yeah. that was when that was when Kira was working there. So I'm pretty sure that that sort of dissolved that, and then it yeah. all sort of went skew with from there went for a burton right. as i say up north yeah there we are uh oh, wow. so went for a burton it's a phrase Never that's what they it. say it's, it's something goes what for a burton. Up north? not as far not further north than you oh, okay <laughs> yeah you're sort of in the middle a bit further north yeah. than you yeah. all right with harder to decipher accents and even you really. <laughs> oh good yeah. they exist that's yeah they do it. exist you have got the hardest accent in the world to understand don't worry uh right so on to the final story of the week ladies and gentlemen and that is stacy final story of the week now ladies and gents and it is stacy martin and Theo. Now, it's at the start of the week, Martin and Stacey look to be all good. It all seems to be kind of tickling along marvellously. Martin takes Stacey out for a date. Stacey is ridiculously excited that she's got chips to eat, because as if she doesn't work on a bat. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that Stacey probably sells chips on that bat van. It seems like an obvious thing to sell. I don't think they do. I do you know? Think I, think, do, actually, I, well, I, know. I think they should. I think they should. It seems Especially to she loves them so much. She loves them that she was so excited. Chips! <laughs> Thrilled. To be fair, I love chips. So I, I love chips. I love mm. chips, but they've got to be a specific type of chip. I ain't interested in fish and chops, fish and chip shops chips. That's hard to say. Oh, fish really? And chips. Yeah, no, I like my favorite types of chips are sort of like the ones that are really crispy. And I've got oh, a, like triple, a real, triple, triple cooked. cooked chips. Yeah, gastro. I had some of those the other day actually, mm. and they were right nice. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. No, I don't yeah. like fries. I'd rather no. have chips over fries. Pans are, pans are crispy. They are. Right? If they're crispy, then I'll take okay. them. Yeah. You know, all right, all right. how do we get onto that? Oh, yeah, chips because, chips. <laughs> because, um, the, the, the picnic, if you can call it a picnic, we're just a bowl of chips, but uh, it's all going well until Stacy remembers that she's supposed to be having a video appointment with Edmund. So, mm. Martin is sort of like, obviously, Martin is really uncomfortable with all of this, but she he still says, Right, well, all right, I'll he tries to be the better person and kind of goes, Right, now I'll watch the kids while you're doing that, that's that's fine. What was, sorry, what was Stacey's plan while Martin and Stacey were on this day and no one was mm. watching the kids? And then she realises that she's double booked. So why did she need somebody to watch the kids? I know that Jean mean? went on that. So Stacey says, I'm meant to be doing this job. Yes. But my mum can't watch the kids because she's doing this cleaning thing. Yeah. Right? So who well, that... was supposed to be watching the kids while they were on this day? Well, I think what was supposed to be happening was that they, in her, I think, I think the way it was supposed to go is that Jean was going to watch the kids while Stacey and Martin were having their date, and then Stacey was probably going to go back. But I think she could just completely forgot that she was supposed to have the video conference. So Stacey was the date was going to go on for as long as Jean could manage to look after the kids, and then they probably would have gone back to theirs. Right, I assume, okay. I assume oh, was right. the plan. Okay, but sorry. 
Sorry that's all right. That's 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 quite all right. Week. <laughs> well, be unbugged, Rick. There you go. I've sorted right. that out for you. You can sleep better now. Um, so Martin uh, goes and looks after the kids. Uh, and I quite liked sort of Arthur. I, mean, I think it was Arthur basically asking, why is mummy dress, yeah. dressed at hope yeah why is mummy putting lipstick on <laughs> like what, what's going on here uh stacy's upstairs doing like the appointments and martin is kind then she's laughing she's having a great time upstairs like laughing about like whatever edmund is saying to her turns out that theo is a massive wit when he's being edmund <laughs> like makes her laugh apparently. a lot apparently um more so than, she, than he was on the date he should have used some of that humor whilst he was on the date and then maybe he might have got somewhere um but martin kind of goes upstairs and at some point over here stacy saying to edmund uh that edmund is the height like the height of her day she looks forward to talking to edmund every single day and he doesn't take that well at all he sort of kind of storms out of the house just as Jean comes back so the kids are being looked after Ray, just in case you were worried about that um oh, yeah, but he yes yeah, all right but he he kind of storms <laughs> out um and Stacey sort of comes downstairs later and goes like where's Martin gone because they were supposed to be going for like proper dinner proper proper dinner proper date at Wolford East so Martin sort of gets his head together and is kind of like uh, and then they go to this date but it turns out that Martin is just really really bothered by the camera stuff now what is your I what are your view like where whose team are you on here with this like I kind of understand Martin's viewpoint don't you so do I because if that were my partner and he were doing something I couldn't like do that, it no I, I don't couldn't. think I could and, if I had and I yeah go on Sorry. No, I mean, all I was going to say is if I had a boyfriend who was doing that, I don't think I'd be, I don't think I'd cope well with it. I'm too, no, I, no, I don't think it would make me feel comfortable at, at all. Like, all you'd, all I would be thinking is, like, what are they doing? Like, how, and how much are they enjoying doing it? I think mm. would be the other question. Because Stacey tries to kind of convey that li- literally it's just customer service what I gave him then, like, making him feel important. Otherwise, he's not mm-hmm. going to give me money. I get that. I do get that, but you, I, it, because it's because of the sort of sexual implications behind it. It's it's harder to sort of kind of separate it from the other partner's perspective. You know, I, it's, it's I tricky. agree, but I, I do see Stacey's side as well. She's already been doing this before she's got with Martin, so it's not mm. like she started it halfway through a relationship. Yeah, yeah. Equally, though, like if, in a way, she's kind. It's really difficult because it's her body. It's up to her what she does with it and all of that. Mm. But from Martin's perspective, could he see? Could he be seeing it as I'm telling you, I'm really uncomfortable with something, and you're then choosing to do it? Are you choosing yeah, that over yeah, being with yeah. me? But I do understand, you know, being liberated and choosing to do what you want to do with your body, and you not being earned by your partner. Yeah. But I do see why you might not be comfortable with your partner doing it. Let us know in the comment section whose team are you on with this. How could you cope with this? Let us know. Let us know. I'd be intrigued to hear your thoughts. Um, but the date ends up going really badly because Stacy offers to buy pudding and Martin just kind of bursts out. I don't want your dirty money. I so say that's really been bugging him for for ages and ages, and it just really doesn't. It really, really yeah. kind of doesn't go well, and it goes horribly. So Martin then goes and gets drunk because what else would you do? Goes out and gets drunk and starts to fight with a group of lads because he becomes really paranoid that any lad that he meets in the square, like these lads are basically kind of just like looking over a phone and sort of like giggling and talking and being lads. Like, oi, oi, lads, 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 lads. Uh, And... uh, That's what they thought, right? So that's a lad yeah, thing. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah generally speaking, yeah. yeah, yeah. They talk about boobs and ludicrous displays during football. That's kind of how it works, isn't it? Um, I know these things, being an absolute lad I know myself. You do. Absolute lad. Um, and so he gets into a fight with with one of these lads, and that is witnessed by Theo. Well, Stacy walks in as well and sees it happening, but Theo witnesses it as well. Importantly. Mm-hmm. Um, and Martin ends up getting himself chucked out of the vic because he's just being violent and aggressive and unreasonable. Uh, and the next day, Stacey kind of, again, I thought very reasonably, sort of went up to him and was just like, right, now you've sobered up and now you've calmed down. Can we talk about this, please? Can we actually sort of have a conversation about what this camera work actually entails so you can understand what I am doing? So they end up talking about it. And I think Martin starts to see kind of it from her perspective, sort of. But in the background is Theo, because obviously Theo mm-hmm. is still doing the the tutoring with Lily. And he's been interrogating Lily all about Stacey and Martin's relationship oh, and trying yeah. to find out. It's all very weird with Theo. He's mm-hmm. continuing to try and get information out of it about their relationship. 
And he overhears Stacey telling Martin, like, this guy means nothing to me. And I said this to you a couple of weeks ago, that Stacey maybe thinks that he's some old bloke who's just lonely. And that's exactly what she sees. She sees Edmund Mm. because he's called Edmund. And how many young people do you know called Edmund? Um, I mean, if if there's there's a young Edmund watching this, let us know. I'd be delighted to hear from you. Hello. Uh, So... (laughs) (laughs) Hello. Um, So... Like he basically overhears Stacey going that this bloke means nothing to him. He's probably just some lonely old bloke, and he's probably not even sexually charged anymore. Not sexual, yeah, yeah, not sexual yeah. at all. He was talking about the price of courgettes at one point. No wonder Theo has difficulty with dating. Bless him if that's Good the height of his conversation. I mean, honestly, the price of courgettes. Yeah, hey, really. I've gone up there to be fair. Have they? Or... I don't really like yeah. courgettes. Is that a yeah. thing? How much yeah, are you, how much do you how much are you paying for a courgette these I think days? Last Rick? time I paid for a two pack, they were one pound thirty five for two courgettes. That's outrageous. It is these days. Get so this same government conversation out. Conversation starter. Conversation <laughs> starter. I'm telling you. Not for. I wouldn't be paying you. I wouldn't be paying you like seventy five quid an hour for that conversation. Though I have to. I have to be honest, Drew. Well, Even if you were wearing to be a leg, fair, a leg you might as well go and buy loads of courgettes, ain't you? If you're paying that. There you go. Well, how, mm. what's Martin charging for the price of courgettes? That's why. Does oh, he sell courgettes? There you go. You see, conversation well, starts. London, London market still might be about similar. London price. prices. There mm. you go. Right. So, if there's anyone still watching, we. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, so, uh, Theo kind of gets into an idea into his head there. Go, All right. You want sexual? I'll give you sexual. And he then, as Edmund, makes a really disgusting, apparently, sexual request of Stacey. I kind of want to what know what it, it was. <laughs> I really want to know. I really want to know what I it was. Like, oh, me and Rob going to speculate about what, what this request it? is. Oh, what I don't was know. It? I, I did have some ideas, but I think they're too rude. Probably not for this podcast. But yeah. I kind of like, there was the fact that Stacey was utterly horrified. Shut the laptop request. straight like, she away. She was horrified. Like, what could he possibly have asked her for that really kind of? Like I'd say let us know much. in the comments, but maybe no, we don't actually. You lot are filthy. Don't. You lot are filthy. I know you are. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. I mean, actually, what I can kind of imagine it doing was, I think Stacey had kind of got herself into it. Because she had created this picture of Edmund in her head mm. about what sort of person he was, she now, by this point, has basically kind of pictured this kind of bloke maybe in his 70s or his 80s who just wants yeah. someone to talk to. Maybe their wife Company. had died a few months ago. And, like, you know, it's quite exciting for him. And his blood pressure's raised quite high enough by the size of her in her, in her kind of undergarments and that would be about it you know maybe if he's lucky on his birthday she might flash him a bit of boob but that would be about it and about where she would feel comfortable of going so maybe even kind of the next step up from that would have been enough for I mean you know you can kind of imagine you know if because she has she has taken pictures of her boobs before we have seen her doing that so that's her boobs have been online before so maybe it was sort of no, other stuff. I didn't click that no, yeah okay. she, it was right when she first started she there was a duff duff of oh, her sort of lowering her top. yeah 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 she that's exactly so she was taking her top her top down and like doing pictures of herself so her she has done that um so I wonder if it was kind of maybe other areas mm. shall we say that he want that he was asking her about maybe anyway uh, but she's horrified by this she slams the laptop down like you say now, unfortunately, later on, she is trying to construct a reply to Edmund, <laughs> telling him what a dirty old man he is. Um, and Martin sees the message that Edmund sent her. And so he's convinced, well, you lied to me then, didn't you? Because clearly it's not just you chatting about courgettes. You're actually talking about other bits and pieces that we can't discuss. You know, so again, that kind of got, kind of all goes badly to the point where... Stacey's like, right, well, do you know what? I'm just going to quit the cam work. It's too much hassle. I can't be asked with this. And so she messages Edmund and tells him that she wants no part of his revolting fantasies. This is what I mean. Like, what was it where it was a fantasy? Like, what did he want her to do? <laughs> I really kind of want to know. I really want to know. I don't I think we're going to know, though, Rob. I, I don't think we are going to know. Is it was that it was that bad that we? I know. mean, thinking about what sort of person Theo is, like he's gone upstairs and he's nicked a bottle of perfume. So I wonder if it involved a bottle of perfume. <laughs> oh my God, Rob! <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> Jesus! A bottle of oust, maybe. Who knows? Anyway, um, <laughs> she, and um, so she sends him a message going like, "We well, know we're done here." And he yeah. messages back and says, oh, is it because you're back with your ex? Now, what was Theo thinking when he when he did that immediately? Like, what? Like, because immediately, obviously, she's going to be like, well, I know you. Like, what? how the hell do you know that? So what was Theo thinking there exactly? Do you reckon that was kind of like an off, like a knee jerk thing that he sent her and then he had to go with it for the rest of the week? Or was he immediately planning on stopping her from that point? What do you reckon? 
I think he wanted her to know that I'm I'm close by and I know what's going on. And I right think from he that moment. Want, I think he wanted her to feel threatened, actually. I think he mm. wanted to say, I know who you are, actually. Um, yeah. Because she's obviously never said anything about her personal life. No. I think he's. I think it's also partly Theo being just so bitter that she decided to not carry on seeing him. He's yeah. trying to hurt her now, and yeah. that's the type of person he is, isn't it? Because effectively, he's now rejected. She's now rejected him twice. Like yeah. she's rejected mm-hmm. Theo, and she's rejected Edmund now as well. But so was, he's now in. Was angry Theo mode. expecting her to do this request? I mm, yeah, I don't think he would have been. Maybe mm. not, because I think the way that he was listening to that conversation and the way that he was sort of angrily chewing on his sandwich implied that it was kind of like, oh, right, OK. And he could sort of see he could sort of see that Martin and Stacey were sort of like on the way to kind of getting back together again. And after he'd got the the information, sort of unhelpful information from Lily in the sense that Lily basically said, well, they're always doing this. They're always kind of flitting backwards and forwards with their yeah. relationship, which would suggest to any sort of outsider that despite the fact that they might kind of split up sometimes and be back together and split up and back together, they are clearly kind of quite in love with each other. They are a thing, whether they're together or not. And they are, of course, co-parents as well, which kind of brings them closer as well. So I think he kind of worked out from that moment, yeah, I've got no chance here. This isn't happening. You know, even mm. in his deluded fantasy world, him and Stacey cannot now be a thing. Unless he then decides wow. to be the saviour because he then ups his game. He sends flowers to the house. I felt so sorry for the flower guy. <laughs> like, what I did he do to this? Yeah. He didn't deserve that abuse that Stacey mm, paid him. She no. practically chased him down the street, banging flowers over his head. He didn't deserve that, poor bloke. Well, she thought he was the stalker, didn't she, initially? So I think she got herself so worked up. Instantly. Yeah, yeah. No, but yeah. The, yeah, but even when she worked out that he wasn't, she still started throwing her like a bit. You can take those flowers as well. <laughs> I felt so sorry for him. So I'm only trying to earn a few quid here, love. Give me a break. So Stacy tries to ring the flower company and find out like if she can get any details about who bought the flowers. The, the, the flower machine, the flower company, with this very angry woman down the phone, are kind of like nothing to do with us. We can't do anything. I'm sorry, confidentiality. And then it transpires anyway that Theo would have paid for the flowers with cash because of course he did. Um, mm-hmm. So they can't help her. So Eve kind of to go goes to see Jack now. What, did you think like because Jack basically like she is right so she does the whole kind of like so I've got this mate who's in this situation thing yeah. uh which I think Jack worked out quite quickly as Stacy because he's you know a policeman and now and again Jack is worth his you'd salt his, so, yeah. you'd hope so um so Jack basically says well if all he's done is send flowers believe it or not not a lot the police can do at that stage which feels accurate unfortunately despite the fact mm. that Stacy probably quite clearly is in danger I doubt very much that the police would do that much more, don't you? I can't see them no, doing it. No, they won't. No. It's, which like kind of... said, it's not legal to send flowers, is it? No, which kind of opens up a whole kind of range of moral debate about this yeah, whole kind of, of thing. Like, I feel like sometimes, I mean, like, you know, we don't need to go massively into this on the, on this little EastEnders podcast, but I kind of feel like this is some the sort of thing that, you know, the police need to update their procedures with this sort of thing, because obviously can work is on the rise, isn't mm-hmm. it? Like, you know, with the rise of OnlyFans and all that kind of thing. So you can sort of see that this kind of scenario is probably fairly common, I would think. And the power it? of the internet and how much more information you can yeah. find out about people. Yeah, they probably do need to update some of the laws. Yeah, yeah it's mm. a bit worrying, really. But at this stage, nothing the police can do to help Stacey. Um, Theo is kind of there in the background listening to those two talking. And Jack even turns around to him and goes, yeah, you're Lily's teacher, aren't you? I don't suppose, you know, just off the top of my head, you know, in a in a sort of scenario where have you seen anybody sort of hanging around the Slater residence? Theo's like, no, no, not at all. No, no, no. Um, but so I think we get from that that Jack has sort of worked out that this is about Stacey. So I wonder where he's going to take that. Because Stacey was worried that Jack would find out that she was doing this cam work and would kind of step in and try to sort of take away Lily, you know, Lily and Ricky's baby yeah. and sort of remove her involvement in that. So that might be something to try and keep an eye on in mm-hmm. future. Um, but Theo kind of overhears that there's nothing the police can do. So again, ups his game. And he does a very clever thing, actually. He sends her a scheduled message um, where he can send the message when he is standing right next door to her so that it completely absconds him from any responsibility. Um and terrifies Stacey because he sends her a message going, I am watching you. That is terrifying. You know that were a thing, by the way, that you can schedule messages. Oh, like yeah. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, well, I, I, it doesn't you do it bode all well. Time, do you? Oh, yeah, every single day. <laughs> every single day. 
you have no idea the amount of alibis I have got from scheduling messages. <laughs> Marvelous thing to be able to do. Um, but he but he arrives at the Slater household because Stacey had chucked him out previously because she was all paranoid about like basically yeah. any man within the fifty mile radius. So he returns to the house with sort of homework for Lily, just as the message arrives on Stacey's phone saying, "I am watching you." So as far as she's concerned, it can't possibly be Theo because he is standing right there. I doubt exactly. Stacey even realises that you can do the scheduling message thing. So well, I didn't know you could, so... There you go. And well, you, What you know, you don't know about sexual camera work, Rue, I think we've established during this podcast, you know. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't be for you, would it? Um, no. So she says to Theo, look, can you just come in? Come in, I don't want the door open. Come in, come in, come in. So it just allows him into the house and locks the door behind her. Uh, and he kind of just says, that's all right, Stacey, all is well, I'm here, you're never alone, and that sort of ends the week with Stacey being a little bit reassured that her actual stalker is in the kitchen with her, and clearly he has now sort of cemented himself as someone who will be able to look after her whilst her and Martin are sort of not really together. Well... Not a good time. The Bad first times. thing he said were when she were looking all over, her, like, well, what's Martin done now? Is he... Is he did he yeah. hurt somebody else or something like yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah, trying to cement that into her head somehow. Well, yeah, because he's because obviously because he saw the fight in the Vic, he then sorts of tries to plant it in Stacey's head. Doesn't really work, but he tries to plant yeah. it into her head that you know Martin shouldn't really be allowed around allowed around mm. the kids because he's clearly a violent, aggressive thug, and I'm not. I'm a quiet, modest teacher who knows Shakespeare. Who would you rather have around your children? <laughs> Stacey's well, like clearly the aggressive thug. Is this where he's headed towards trying to turn her against Martin? And you I know, think that's going to be, be the protector. Yeah. And- Whilst upping the whilst upping the sort of stalking game and terrifying her more, maybe he might even try. I wouldn't put it past him to try and even sort of frame Martin for doing that. Not that I think I was Stacey just thinking would, that. I didn't I wonder don't, that. Yeah, I don't think Stacey would believe that. If I'm honest, I think that, that well, might be where he trips up. I think what he's going to try and do is get Martin as far away from Stacey as possible. Yeah. And then sort of try to make her think that it's him, but I don't think Stacey would believe but that. Could, so I think that's why it'll trip this... him up. This could lead to Stacey getting into a very vulnerable state because we know mm. that she has mental health issues. So yeah, with the bipolar she stuff, yeah. Up, she could end up that paranoid that she might start believing Depends it. Depends how dark they want to go. Know? You, could, you know, mm. I don't know. Yeah, because Theo does know about Stacey's bipolar because he was in the appointment when Gene and Freddie went to go and get his ADHD diagnosed. Yeah. And Gene, and me- mentioned, and Gene mentioned that her and Stacey mm. both have bipolar. So he does know that. So and I yeah. and I wondered when Lily ran off to go and get Eve when Stacey kicked Theo out of a tutoring session. Yeah. Did Lily mention it or was it just me in my head thinking that Lily's panicking that Stacey's it's something to do with Stacey's mental health with the way that she was going off? Maybe. I mean, I think I would imagine that Lily... It's quite easy to play on it. Yeah, I can imagine that Lily is kind of always... Because Lily's kind of always a bit on guard when it comes to the bipolar thing, because obviously she Mm. went through a stage of wondering whether she had it. And I don't think that ever really went away. Um, Mm. So it's... I think I imagine she's always kind of on ultra on guard with both Jean and Stacey when it comes to that sort of thing. So in a way, Theo has kind of got quite an easy kind of plain runway ahead of him to try and make Mm. Stacey's life as scary as possible from here on in. So, yeah, I mean, this was the story of the week for me, and it sort of really um, ramped up in terms of what Theo is capable of and what he's mm-hmm. going to do and why he's going to be quite a good villain, I have to say. I am I am enjoying this storyline. As, as uncomfortable as it's going to be and as dark as it yeah, could yeah, potentially yeah. get, it could get a lot darker from here. Like, it just depends how far they want to go. Because if, if they are framing Theo to be a potential suspect for Christmas Day on the floor... And there's many months ahead of what he can, what he's capable of doing. He could get a lot, lot worse from here. I'm very excited about that. I am. <laughs> there you go. Hey, him, but love him. Yeah, shout and Freudian element. Marvellous. Uh, so there we are then. That's this week's story discussions. Uh, Gold Star Ray, who's, who's it going to this week? Oh, I've just been sat trying to think who do I want mm. to give it to. Tricky week for it this week, I think. It is. It is a really tricky week for it. I feel like I want to give it to Martin, but I gave it to him recently. Martin but, for me didn't deserve it this week. He was there was an element where he was a bit of a knob this week. I thought. I mean, I know it was, was. all for good reasons, but it was I also know, kind of yeah, like, no, come on, Martin, right. you know, come on, Martin. I'm going to give it to Cathy because she won her cruise back. Fair enough. She deserved to win it back, and I liked her in suitcase. So fair enough. 
and I think I might just get mine to Stacey. I think she, I think it was a good week for Stacey. It was, I enjoyed Stacey's storyline the most throughout the week. And yeah, I, it's great having Lacey Turner having a big storyline to herself because she's not had one for so long, has she? Like, she's, yeah, no. she's, she's, she's such an incredible actress. And I love the fact that she's got like a nice big story for herself that looks to be going quite away from mm-hmm. here. So that's exciting. Marvelous, right? Final chapter of the podcast, as usual, ladies and gents, is comments from you lovely people. So now I've pressed record and started talking because I just started reading an email without having without having recorded anything there because I'm an idiot. Uh, we had a lovely email from George B this week who says, "Hello, E20 After Dark. I've been seeing comments about how Stacy's cost of living story hasn't been represented well, and unfortunately, I have to agree. Now time has passed. Stacy being that broke while multiple working adults were under one roof never seemed believable. It feels like a wasted story that could have been compelling. I remember watching a true story indie film called I Daniel Blake, where there was a food bank scene that started a viral conversation." That scene has struck with me for years as it's disturbing how bad things got for that particular mother. We've seen a fraction of how bad things got for Stacey, but she still managed to be a regular at the Vic for months. This story felt half done before it transitioned into the cam work and Theo. EastEnders writers could have explored a range of unspoken issues such as uh, period poverty, which has increased by 21% since the cost of living crisis, as well as exploring how people have been left with no choice but to shoplift for the basic essentials. It's frustrating as I feel like a lot of stories at the moment don't get fully fleshed out to its full potential. Maybe that story would have been suited to Chelsea, Karen or Bernie. What do you think? Well, what I would say straight away is that, yes, the thing with any character that ever goes through a I'm skint storyline, you will still find them quite regularly in the Vic or the Calf where you just wouldn't go if you had no money whatsoever would you like you wouldn't you'd never go to the pub because you can't afford it and you'd never go to the cafe because you can't afford to buy a cup of tea when you could just make one for yourself at home it's 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 that kind of thing like obviously the cafe is a community setting that obviously is important and lots of characters can go there and have conversations but it you you've got to kind of juggle that um but what do you think i mean with regards to like how the storyline of stacy being skinned has been handled I think that email suggested some good ideas, especially like the period poverty and things like that. But I think mm. you can just get there's so many things, there's so many other things you could explore with it. Is it's deciding what you want to cover? I mean, it just mentioned about people shoplifting. We had that a few years ago. Remember when Denise was going to food? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Shoplifting. The so we've had that before. Duff Duff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we've had that before. I I do agree though. Like obviously we've said before, there's a lot of working adults in that house. Mm. Um. But equally, you know what? Things are so expensive that, yeah, she probably would still want to go to that. She's got a lot of kids. Kids are expensive, you know. Mm. I, d- I agree with I agree with it. And also, I think I agree with how EastEnders have handled it in some respects as well, well though. So. I was sort of thinking about this and sort of the journey that this Stacey story has actually taken. Yeah. Actually, it's been quite a long journey because if you, 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 you're you pacing it all the way back to when Lily first became pregnant and the mm-hmm. fact that, and, and Stacey was in pretty big money issues before that even happened. So then Lacey, um, because then Lacey, then Lily became pregnant, which automatically kind of put more issues on her. And then mm-hmm. Alfie moved out, Freddie moved out, not that Freddie was contributing that much anyway. Um, and Eve's now been fired from being Nish's assistant. So those money things have been kind of going on in the back ground mm. so which kind of led her into doing the cam work which then sort of now has now led into the theo story so it's not like it, it hasn't really had attention paid to it for months and months now like stacy has been skint for months and months and the camera work has as she has said given her a lot more freedom than she had remember at one point she had bailiffs knocking on, on the door and take and like yeah. basically raging in the house so True. it has been there i get I do understand, though, about the whole kind of going to the Vic and the calf thing. Like, that always yeah. annoys in any storyline where any character mm. is claiming to be skinned. Because, like, well, what the hell are you doing in the cafe then ordering a cake? Mm. You can't afford that. You know, that's always yeah. frustrating. But that's not just EastEnders. Like, Corey does that all the time. Like, you know, they've yeah. got the calf, and you wouldn't go... You, why would you go to a place where you can just make that at home? Like, I'll have some toast, please, and I will pay you Especially for that Especially when toast. it's round corner from your house as well. Yeah, like, you probably yeah. would... Like, you know, and the laundrette as well. Like, why would you not just use your own washing machine? Machine when you've got like perfectly valid one yeah but no one house. no one in albert square owns a washing machine rob don't ever no no one that. does no one does it whatsoever unless it needs unless something needs to be washed that yes. and like evidence needs to be hidden that's when they own a washing machine oh yeah of course uh so yeah i can't i totally see george's point there it's there's so, there's element there's elements of it that kind of are frustrating and also you know yeah the cost of living crisis they've kind of touched on it a few times you know i think whitney and chelsea sort of had a little bit of a 
kind of flirt with it as a storyline at one point, didn't they? And then they mm-hmm. obviously had a few more people move in and that seemed to have sorted them out because they were living in a very kind of posh house that realistically, yeah. if you are working at a market stall, you cannot afford to live in in, That's in it. central London, right by a, a tube station. huge terrace house in but London. That house would be, be close, worse, yeah. So. Pay. That house would be close to a million, probably, in today's Yeah, money. easily, easily, yeah. maybe more. And obviously, you know, the tailors, the tailors, by their very definition, are sort of the skint family yeah. of the square, aren't they? And yeah. realistically, they probably couldn't afford to have moved to the square in the first place, you know? Mm. So, I don't know, sometimes you have to sort of make allowances in order for these characters to purely exist. Mm. But, yeah, it's, it, it is odd We sometimes. might see more from the tailors as well. They might start... You know, they might start having more money trouble storylines themselves yet. Yeah, maybe time. I feel it? like that. I feel like they are a money trouble storyline yeah, themselves, it's constant, though. Like, mm. yeah, their very existence, like the the, the the demographic that someone, especially like Karen, is supposed to represent. Like we all yeah. kind of, we all know a Karen. To be fair, don't we? In, yeah. in the and I mean that in terms of you know, we all know a Karen Taylor as opposed to oh, don't be such a Karen. You know, and yeah. <laughs> not. You know, um, so yeah, interesting. But let us know your comments uh, and your thoughts about that in the comment section below. And uh, did you have a comment from someone from Australia, Ray? Didn't you? And I would I like you now to read that in an Australian accent because it would amuse me. <laughs> Go on. What really? Aust- yes, I want you to read it in an Australian accent because this oh. guy's because this message is from Australia and it made me excited that it exists. So I would like you to now read this in an Australian accent. Okay, I will try my best. Off you Apologies go. In advance, this is one from yeah. Grazia Sadawe who said, "Good day, I'm from Melbourne, Australia, and I know no one." <laughs> Watch as he stenders. I can't do it anyway. I have to listen to this wonderful podcast four weeks behind because we are four weeks behind on Australian binge. Anyway, still doing it now. Cindy's back. Oh my god! No, Rob, because I couldn't carry on doing it at all. That's a shame. I'm I was so enjoying sorry that. because that is such a lovely message. And yes. thank you for getting in touch from Australia. Thank you. Australia, mind blowing. We 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 world famous, mate. We are world famous. I think I think that. Proves that we are. We have another listener called Stephen who listens to us from China. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We are wow. world exclusively famous, mate. To be Amazing. honest, we'll probably be in the jungle this time next year, if I'm honest. We'll be we'll be on I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, I expect. You can, mate. I've, no, thanks. Yeah, you can nanas, as you would say. You can nanas. <laughs> you can nanas. I have no interest in having any... I said this to uh, Grazia on uh, on Facebook. I don't understand how... I don't I know why anybody would choose to share a country with Huntsman Spiders. They are the size... Oh. They are the size of Arctic lorries. I'm all right, thanks. Rob no. hates spiders. <sighs> hates spiders. Wow. Like... Ugh. Yeah, I don't know how I would react if I actually saw one in real life a Huntsman Spider. I think I might collapse genuinely. I think you'd I think... run faster than you've ever run in your entire life, and that's not hard. <laughs> but thank you so much for that lovely message. We really yeah, appreciate it. It's really nice to know that. Like, sorry how... for the awful accent. I thought it was a brilliant accent. I thought you did that really <laughs> well. Great Ree's accent. <laughs> in fact, yeah, I might put a poll online because you put a poll online when you were talking about my <laughs> smug face last week. And you lot, you lot, I haven't forgiven you lot either. What was the results of the poll? Has Rob got a smug face? 86% of you 86%. Thanks for that. Yeah, 86% think I've got a smug face. That's really nice. Yeah, cheers for that. You, you, you started this. (laughs) You're welcome. Well, if you'd like to get in touch with us about anything else and Rob's smug face, you can find us on Facebook on Albert Square After Dark. You're doing your own link. Twitter and Instagram. (laughs) 20 after dark if you're watching on youtube don't forget to like and subscribe you can listen to us on apple and all your favorite podcast sites email us at e20 after dark podcast at gmail.com mm-hmm. look at you leading into your own link i you. using my initiative wrong ah, sorry by, it's all right i'm not paid by the word it's all right don't you worry about it you uh yes prepared for that one i wasn't you, you're getting too independent for your own good young lady let me tell you that <laughs> Thank you very much, though, for listening. And thank you for your lovely messages. Please keep them coming. We love talking to you. You can join our Facebook group where we have a fantastic over 850 people currently on that Facebook group. And they all love EastEnders as much as you do. So come along and have a natter on there. Um, That's it for this week. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for watching. We should be back same time next week. Until then, it is goodbye from me. And bye from me. Good day. See you later. Bye. Bye.